Wanna know what it takes to travel to Mars? When will we accomplish a first human landing? And what Elon Musk's company SpaceX has to do with it? Yes? Then watch this video. Hello and welcome back to Alex SpaceX Talks and to another SpaceX ABC series. Today with the letter J for Journey to Mars. Before we start though, I have some interesting personal news to share with you. From October on, I will be working as a space guide for the newly built space observatory in Bern, Switzerland, called the Space Eye. The Space Eye was constructed by world-famous star architect Mario Botta. The interior hosts a space museum, a high-end 8K planetarium, as well as the biggest telescope of Switzerland on top. If you are planning a round trip in Switzerland, don't forget to visit me at the Space Eye Observatory. I would be delighted to showing you around. More news about my involvement with the Space Eye will follow on my channel. But now let's get back to today's episode. Our red planet has always fascinated mankind through its remarkable appearance in the night sky. What seemed to be tunnel-like structures on its surface and even a face potentially created by an alien civilization, turned out to be just canyons and nothing more than an optical illusion. The first Mars flyby of the Mariner 4 space probe in 1965 made it clear that Mars was not populated by an alien civilization and seems to be inhabitable. But our neighbor planet caught the attention of astronomers and researchers at NASA Roscosmos and other space agencies nevertheless. After the successful Apollo moon landings, the focus was clearly set on Mars again. The successful touchdown of the Viking 1 probe marked the beginning of dozens of space probes sent to the Red Planet. There are currently seven orbiters surveying the Red Planet. A total of eight rovers have been launched to Mars, seven of them landed successfully, and three are currently still operational. So far, Mars has only been visited by space probes. But what about the human Mars landing? NASA was repeatedly pushing the date of a first human landing on Mars more into the unforeseeable future. Currently, the long-term goal of NASA's Artemis program is to land on the red planet in the year 2040. Whoa, still some years to go. But hey, there is of course SpaceX. The company which Elon Musk founded in 2002 with the goal of making humanity multiplanetary. Mars isn't exactly hospitable, but it is one of the better nearby options for humans to settle. The Martian day is just a bit longer, the temperature range is not too extreme and the amount of land is similar. There is water under the surface and an abundance of resources that could help to sustain human life. In the long term, Elon Musk wants SpaceX to put 1 million people on Mars by 2050. Musk wants to reach Mars with his Starship rocket, which is currently being developed at Starbase Texas and which is still in a prototype state. Starship will have the capacity of bringing up to 100 people or 100 tons of cargo on a single trip to Mars. If all goes as planned with Starship, Musk should be able to land humans on Martian soil in 2030. But how exactly? Because a journey to Mars is pretty much expensive, to say the least. For Musk, reusable rockets are the key to making space travel affordable. Like SpaceX's Falcon rockets, Starship and its first rocket stage, Super Heavy, are both fully reusable. Besides having reusable rockets, the following two components are needed for a journey to Mars and in the long run, to establish a human presence on the red planet. First, refueling of starships in orbit. Because so much fuel will be needed for a trip to Mars, every starship needs to refuel in orbit. Second, the ability to produce propellant on Mars. If it's a challenge to launch with enough fuel to get there, then transporting the fuel to get back would be even more prohibitive. That is why starships will use methalox, a combination of methane and oxygen. To make the methane, SpaceX will collect carbon dioxide from Mars' atmosphere and will mine water from the surface. 
Through this, the company can produce all the fuel it needs for the return trip. Ha! Huh. So far so good. But further hurdles which make our journey to Mars and back to Earth less comfortable are the immense radiation, isolation of the astronauts, distance from Earth, negative effects of gravity and the hostile environment on the human body, and last but not least, the possibility of not coming back alive. You see, the list goes on and on. However, with all those hurdles in mind and the steps still needed to be accomplished, a human Mars landing between 2030 and 2040 should be theoretically doable. I am confident that either NASA or SpaceX or even both companies together will put the first humans on Martian soil in this or the next decade. That was all for today folks. I hope that you have all enjoyed this episode. Please give the video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a great week my friends and see you soon. Ciao!